In this video, we're gonna be using the club, the big top, and we're gonna do a comparison between the timeless titanium and the timeless slim stainless steel. Stay tuned. Hey there folks, and welcome back for another video. I'm your host CDB, and thanks so much for joining me for this special comparison video. And as mentioned before, today we're gonna to be comparing the timeless titanium with the new crown handle, Astra SP blade, to the Timeless Slim Stainless Steel Astra SP Blade. And we'll get into the tail of the tape on that in just a moment. But first, let's talk a little bit about the soap, which is the Big Top from the Shaving Shop Club, which is Ariane and Evans made by Sneaky P. Sneaky, not stinky, but sneaky. I didn't know if I would like this when I ordered it, but I do. The scent is really unusual, and it's kind of like the circus minus the, the Big Piles of Elephant Poop. <laughs> it's... Uh, you get citrus, cotton candy. Let's go ahead and show you how they describe it right there or show you the notes. Uh, citrus, cotton candy, amber, caramel, and it's a sort of a gourmandy type scent. Um, scent strength, definitely under medium. It's not quite medium, but it's really pleasant. And I think if you're one of those people like gourmand type of scents, this is an unusual one that's really nice. I don't know what took me so long to get it because I really like it. The consistency on this soap, very soft. This is the Kaizen base, which you know to be very good quality. Um, let's put the ingredients for you right there. It's got it all. All the butters, goat's milk, cocoa butter, uh, cocoa, aloe, lanolin, you name it. It's in here. And I always say when you get one of those soaps that has all these great ingredients, I'll say it has chupacabra oil, dragon tallow, super blue, emu, essence of Sprite, and all these things just to say it's got everything in there. And uh, this is definitely... A, uh, a good formula. Kaizen, Kaizen 2, or even his previous formulas. Sneaky Pete is definitely one of the premier soap makers out there. His stuff is always of good quality. Uh, the question will be, do you like the scent? And today, I really like the scent on this one. In the shaving, club, in the shaving shop club, this one comes to you um, under $4. I won't tell you exactly, but that is a good price there on a cost chart. Um, I'm really looking forward to using it today. So, let's get to the tail of the tape. The tail of the tape, for those of you who don't watch boxing, used to be when they announced the boxers and they'd show the weight, height, age, and where they came from and so on. So on the the razors here, we have the uh, Slim OC, the uh, Timeless Slim OC, because it's got that slim head. This is stainless steel. This starts at $195. We have the Titanium 0.95 blade gap uh, Timeless razor. Starts at $225. The Slim is 3.7 ounces. The titanium is 2.3 ounces, so quite a bit uh, more heft on the, the slim. The blade gap uh, is 0.95 on the uh, titanium razor and uh, 0.5 on the slim. Uh, the materials, 304 stainless on the uh, stainless steel slim, and it is grade five titanium on the titanium 0.95. So, we look forward to using these today. Both are loaded with Astra SP blades. And as I always like to mention when I use Timeless, you see how those open comb are rounded? Like so, that's one of the best designs in open comb because you don't feel those teeth. Really, really nice razors, Timeless. Okay, blade Astra SP, let's get going. Let's just get after it. And I hope everyone's doing well. Standard 24 hours growth today. And this is plain water, by the way. And this bottle is uh, available on Amazon. I always try to link the products uh, below, but of course I'm not asking you to buy anything. I never do. I'm just making you aware of what, what's out there, and if you want to buy it, you surely can. This is a timeless uh, copper lathering bowl. We do have an Ariane and Evans <laughs> shaving brush, and you can see we're blooping already. The, uh, the, the Kaizen formula in virtually all of Pete's soaps, pretty much anything I've ever made does a good job at holding water, so that's a really good thing because holding that water lends itself to slickness, which is great. And I have found that all of Pete's soaps, regardless of which one you use, is of good quality. And so it doesn't matter to me whether it was the goat's milk formula, the, the very first ones he made. Um, you know, uh, I remember testing some of the first soaps he ever made with goat's milk. Uh, I think it, one of them was Asian plum that we tested and it was quite good right out of the gate. So P Sneaky Pete, had some success right out of the gate with snow, with soap baking. Oof, did I say soap baking? You know who's not having success today with speaking, and that is me. <laughs> but, you know, it comes with the territory. Anyway, really nice lather, easily 
with uh, these products from the Shaving Shop Club. I find the, the club to be a very good value. All you have to do, folks, I can't tell you how much things are exactly, but I'll tell you this. If you order usually around three products within a six month period of time, you've paid for your club membership. So if you've been interested and you're kind of on the fence and you're like, eh, I don't know if I'm gonna get value out of that. Well, if you buy a few soaps or a couple of soaps and an F shave, you have paid for that membership. So please keep that in mind. And again, um, I'm not asking you to join because it doesn't make any difference whatsoever to me whether you join or not. But I'm just putting that information out there if you're a value-minded person. All right, so let's see how we do here. We'll start with the Timeless Titanium 0.95 on this side. Very nice, very smooth razor. Let's go ahead and take a few strokes with this one. Wow. It's amazing um, how similar those two feel. Let me rinse this one and set it down. The, um, I would expect the 9.5 to feel a little more blade feely, but um, those felt quite similar in those first few strokes. So we'll, we'll see how they feel over time here. But I tell you right now, both of these are great razors. And one of the viewers pointed out yesterday, and I forgot who it was, Timeless has some of the best rinse ports. You see those little holes right there? That's so you can rinse the cream and hair out of the razor. And Timeless makes some of the best rinse ports that you've ever seen in their razors. And they work very, very well. And so that's one of the reasons I really like Timeless. Their designs are outstanding. All their products are designed and machined here in the States by Timeless themselves. They don't outsource. They're making the product themselves. And so if they get to running low, they'll just make more. They keep stuff in stock for the most part. But if they don't keep stuff in stock, you can assure they'll be working on it. And so when I rinse this razor, the water shoots down through here and it comes out those rinse ports and it just gets very nice and clean. And so that's one of the things I really like about Timeless razors. And I must say this, um, the slim here, which has a more slim uh, profile on the, the head, still feels quite efficient. Um, and it, for me, feels similar to the 0.95. Um, so I'm not feeling that one is considerably more efficient than the other within these first few strokes anyway. They both feel quite efficient. Uh, to me, the, the main difference that I'm getting is the slim is much heavier than the titanium. And that is because stainless steel is quite a bit heavier than titanium as a metal. So there you have it. The soap is, uh, it's really, really nice. I'm really enjoying the scent. Again, I would call this one, as far as scent strength goes, definitely under medium. And a lot of times, you know, Pete, uh, Pete's soaps are quite stout. This one is, you know, I would, I would consider a notch or so below medium. So it's not in your face strong. It's a pleasant scent. Um, and I tell you, you're going to see a lot of uh, A&E stuff upcoming, so be prepared for that because he just had a drop. And a lot of us were, you know, joking and moping around that there's that Pete hasn't dropped anything for a while. Or he had made some, you know, sort of sense that he had, he put out some sense that he had made previously. And a lot of us were going, come on, Pete, we don't want the retreads, you know. But um, he had a drop on Wednesday night and... When those products start coming in, you're gonna see a lot of A&E in your um, Shave of the Days and videos and so and so on. So prepare for that. And it will be deservedly so, because let's face it, Pete's product, you, you can't argue with it. You know, I always caveat because I know um, you, you kind of have to look for something to complain about with Pete. And for me, the only thing I can really hit him on is uh, speed of shipping or something like that, which is really minor um, because I've had issues before and he's always taken care of them. Like I had one where the aftershave was broken upon arrival and he fixed it immediately, sent out another one. Um, and so he, he's always done well to, to fix any issues, but sometimes those products don't go out immediately lightning fast. So, you know, keep that in mind. He's transitioning full time into a to this. He's only been at it for a few months now, full-time, because prior to that, he, he was doing it as a hobby. But now, 
Now the great thing is we get to hold Pete to higher standards because he's a full-time artisan and he can't use that hobbyist excuse. I'm just a hobbyist. No more, Pete, no more. <laughs> and I know he had a lot of orders the other night, so. Um, and he's had a big European, several big European orders. So I'm excited for the folks in Europe who have a chance to try some of these offerings because he sent, I don't know, at least three pallets, I want to say, of stuff in the last, you know, couple of months. So that's very exciting for me to get to see other people getting these products and going, wow, I really like the, you know, these A&E or Shaving Shop Club products. I tell you, both of these razors in efficiency, they seem very similar to me. Um... Both very nice. Both feel nice and efficient. You do get some blade feel on both. Um, it's really a hard. I was thinking maybe the 95 might feel more efficient, but in using them here, this this one with the 0.5, to me, feels close to as efficient. You know, you can definitely feel it cutting. You can feel a little blade there, which I personally like. Both are efficient razors, I would say. Oh, very nice, very nice. Woo, it's going to be, I don't know. Uh, it's going to be hard to, to sort of declare a winner here because both of them are excellent. But at the end, we'll, we'll let you know which one we choose if we could only choose one. But based on the way the shave is going, it's really, really tough. So again, back to Sneaky Pete. Um, he, he's really been doing great things and, and I'm happy for him because, you know, in the interest of full disclosure, he's my friend. But don't let that fool you, folks. Pete knows. And he has told me, you're going to kill me. <laughs> you know, like sometimes we'll we'll chat and he was like, oh, God, your next video, you're going to kill me. And uh, he knows that I want the best for him. But I think that we can get the best out of Pete by not fanboying, you know. Now, I'm going to sing the pra his praises and virtues when he does things great like this soap right here i love it so great job and he is i think without question one of the premier soap makers i mean i, I friend or, or not this stuff is great but i think pete will benefit more from him from us uh just giving him honest feedback at all times rather than fanboying fanboying mean meaning to me if you like something that doesn't mean you're a fanboy you become a fanboy when you can find no fault with something where there is fault or where things could be better. And you just sort of, um, you cannot bring yourself to say anything critical because you're in the you're in the fanboy realm and you can just find no wrong with anything. And sometimes, quite frankly, uh, I, I do see people suffering from that. Like I remember a couple of months uh, ago in the Facebook uh Shaving Shop Club VIP group, which is for members of the club. Pete made a post and he was saying, I, you know, we've been, we've been struggling with the footful. Ugh, I can't speak. So how can I be critical of someone when I can't even speak myself? <laughs> anyway, uh, Pete made a post and he basically said, we've been struggling with fulfillment. We're hiring people. We're trying to do better. And the subsequent responses to that were not like, oh, thanks so much, Pete, you know, for for identifying the issue, we appreciate that you're working on it. Basically, the subsequent posts were, uh, to heck with people, Pete, if they can't wait for their product. You know, they should be more patient. People aren't going to run out of soap, are they? And it was basically, it's like, wow, I, it blew my mind. And that is fanboying. When you can't even take any level uh, or you can't offer any sort of constructive criticism. And when Pete himself said, you know, at the time, this is several months ago, keep in mind, they were struggling a little bit, getting things out the door. And he himself said, I'm working on it. I'm trying to do better. And every, almost every post was like, no problem, Pete. We'll wait forever. We'll pay you more to wait. And I was like, this is just a absolute utter fanboy. Um, and in my opinion, that is not beneficial. I do understand the tendency of people to want to support people that they like and their favorite artisans. But when it's in the realm of fanboying and you can't even bring yourself to 
to read something and go, you know what, Pete, you're right. And we appreciate your efforts in fixing the problem. That would be fine. But going, you don't have a problem, Pete, take twice as long. I was like, holy crap. So folks, if you find yourself in that category where you can't bring yourself to, um, even when someone admits they're having issues to accept that you're in, you're in the fanboy realm. And so, uh, if you're in the fanboy realm, a lot of times I don't find that offering feedback to be helpful because you're just going to tell them what they want to hear. And, and from my perspective, that's, that's not of great value because if, if Pete would have just listened to the people in there, he wouldn't have changed anything. He'd, okay. No problem. I'm just going to keep doing whatever, you know, but he didn't. He hired some additional staff uh, and, you know, hopefully we'll see an improvement there. But you know me, and like I always say, if it's if it's still not up to snuff, I'll tell you. And I say that uh, liking Pete a whole lot. But I have an obligation here to be objective and, um, you know, not to fanboy as much as possible. We all fall victim to that occasionally, you know, but we'll try to keep it on point. All right, man, I got to tell you, this shave has been fantastic. The soap is great. The razors are great. The blade was great. The brush was great. I mean, there's there's just nothing to complain about. And these razors, despite being very different, feel very similar in efficiency. Um, but when we come back and wrap this up, we'll pick which one I would choose if I could only choose one. But I'm gonna tell you right now, I'm happy to own both. So <laughs> keep that in mind. All right, let me rinse. We'll come back, get into the post. Stay tuned. All right, and we are back and off cam. We did a warm water rinse. We followed that with the alum, uh, just applied alum to the face. Then we did a cold water rinse. That was a really nice, uh, smooth shave. Almost no stinging from the alum. Following the cold water rinse, we, we applied the Thayer's Magic, of course, because it's made by witches. This, Thayer's Cucumber, and that was a really enjoyable top-notch shave. The soap today, the big top from the Shaving Shop Club, which is A&E, uh, really, really top quality soap, great, great soap. I really enjoyed the scent as well. No complaints about that whatsoever. The brush, Ariana and Evans brush. It's one of my favorite synthetic brushes, uh, very underrated in my opinion. And the bowl was our uh, Timeless Copper, which you see here every day now. As to the razors, it's hard to lose with these razors, in my opinion. If you're in the market for a premium razor, uh, the Timeless Slim versus the Timeless Titanium, and I believe you might be able to get the Timeless Slim and Titanium as well. I'm not sure, so just check the website. I'll have links below. If I could only choose one, I would go with the Titanium because I it's just a little bit lighter. It's not as light as aluminum, but it's a little bit lighter than the stainless, and I love this handle. And I love that open comb design, but both shave very efficiently. And so there's no lack of efficiency, even in the slim, both great razors. I'm happy to own both and neither one of them are going anywhere. But if I, I could only own one, I think I would go for the titanium just because I slightly prefer it. But this slim in its own right is a, an excellent razor. And let's see if it can show you sort of the difference there. Just a little bit slimmer from top to bottom. Really nice razors. You can't go wrong with Timeless, in my view. Some of the best premium offerings on the market, to be sure. All right. Thank you so much for joining me. I really enjoyed this shave. I hope you enjoyed it too. I hope you enjoy your shaves as well. Till next time, I've been your host, CDB, reminding you it's your shave. Do it your way. And as always, God bless.